So basically, you will go to um, Google, and then and then you will search tab two thousand student or trial version. Okay, so here you will find SAP two thousand. Sub two thousand trial. Yeah, this one. And I believe it will ask you for your email, some personal information, what company that you work in, and then you submit your application. They will they will answer you at the same day, and then they will send you a link to download the the software, and they will give you like a a number that you put. Um, in the license, and it will be good to go for one month. Okay. All right. So let's get back to SAP 2000. So last time we started SAP 2000 by solving trusses. Today we are going to do different application by solving uh, beams and also frames. So let's see how we can do analysis. I'm not sure if you guys can see this. Let me turn off the lights. Okay, so uh, let's solve this uh, beam. Uh, this beam has two types of load, live load and dead load. So we need to define two load patterns. I didn't give you a cross section for the beam, but it doesn't matter whatever the cross section of this beam is, the answer will be the same. So you can define your own cross section. We can assume a concrete beam uh, width 25 centimeter, depth 70 centimeter. And then we will start by defining by building the grids for this problem and solving uh, the problem. So let's let's do it step by step. As <clears throat> if you guys remember from last time, so basically I will um, open SAP two thousand, and then I will get here and then hit new model because I'm not opening uh, a model that is already exists. So with new model, it will ask me. What is the units that you are going to use? So let me check back on AutoCAD file. I'll find that I have ton meter units. So I will keep the units ton meter. And then I'm going to do grids only. So I go to grids. Let's check uh, the grids that I have here. Okay, so how many grids in X direction that can help me best to build this problem on SAP 2000? So I have one here, two, and I'm going to go with these two points, and I will tell you why I'm not going to do these two. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, six grids in X direction. How many grids in Y direction? One. Just one. How many grids in Z direction? One. Only one, because I only have the beam in just one line. It's not two levels, just one level. So, okay. So let's get back. I have a short memory. So how many grids in X direction? Six. All right, let's say six. Y is one. Z is one. And the spacing, here's the tricky thing. The thing is, if I hit a spacing six meters, it's going to make equally six meters, right? But I don't have equal spacing. I have some seven, some is two. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave it six. And I'll show you how we can change it because we cannot change it. We cannot define it here right now. So let's keep it six. And then I will show you right now how can I change it. It doesn't matter the spacing in Y direction or the spacing in Z direction because I only have one grid. And I'm going to hit OK. So it turns on a 3D view and XY view, so you can change it to actually X Z view, something like this. And I have equal spacing. So right now, what I wanna do is I want to change this spacing. To change it, we need to edit this uh, grid system. So once you hit right click on the screen anywhere, it will open a box, something like this. And the first thing that you will find, edit grid data. So let's edit grid data. So editing grid data will ask you 
what do you want to do? Do you want to modify the current global grid system or you want to add a new grid system or you want to add a copy of this system? So what I'm going to do, I only need this grid system, but I just want to do some modifications. So I'm going to hit modify this system. Your name is Fatima. And um, and then next is that I want to look at this grid system. So I'll find I have seven, and then oh, all right. I have seven and then two, 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 and another two. Okay. So I go back to SAP 2000. So right now it tells me you have these grids in X axis, this grids in Y axis, this grid in Z axis. So the grids in X axis, it start with zero and then six, 12, 18, 24. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep zero and this is gonna be seven and I add two over the seven, so it's gonna be nine. Another two is gonna be 11. Another two is gonna be 13. And another two is gonna be 15. Okay, so right now I kept it adding the grids one after one. Once I hit okay, I will find that these spacings got it changed. So I have seven and grids and then two, two, two. So you can change the grids as you want. Is Jose here? Do you have any problem with the grid Okay, so right now I I prepared the grids to draw the geometry for the problem, but I didn't draw the problem yet. Okay, so the next step is to start to define some few things, to start to define the sections, the material, the loads. We need to do all these definition before we start drawing the problem. So let's hit the define panel and I will go to the materials. I'm not gonna change much. So it depends on like, if I'm having a big project, as I told you, you need to change these materials. But right now it's changing the material um, I mean, like, it's not a big concern. Like, you will go, to, for example, to this concrete, modify, see if you want to change the concrete weight, the Young's model is, the, the Poisson ratio. Same thing with the uh, steel. You can modify, but depends uh, if you are going to use a steel material in this uh, example or not. Same thing with the uh, cross-section. So maybe we can define one cross-section. We add new property, and then we make a concrete and we big rectangle, and let's assume that this is a beam, uh, 25 centimeter by 70 centimeter. And let's make this 0.7 and this 0.3. And I will make sure it's a oh, 0.25, okay. So let's make it. 0.25 and then I will say okay so I have the beam here is defined the second thing is the uh, load patterns as we discussed last time we're not gonna let the, the software calculate the load pattern for the, the dead load for us so we're gonna make the self-weight modifier is zero and if you don't know why the self-weight modifier is zero go back to the previous lectures that was recorded on YouTube so you'll understand how we did this and then I'm going to add another load case because if I go to the AutoCAD file, I'll find that I have LL means live load and DL means dead load. So getting back to SAP 2000, I'm going to add a new load pattern. So I have dead and live load. And then I will hit OK. So right now I define the materials, define the cross sections and define the load pattern. If you want to define load combinations, you can also define load combinations as we did last time. Okay, so right now it's ready uh, to start.
zoom in. All right, so let's draw the problem. What you can do actually, you can click on draw frame, something like this, and you make sure that the beam 25 by 70 is activated and you draw one beam and then divide this beam at the grids. But for me, it's easier that I draw them divided from verse, like I make something like this. Something like that. But for me, it will be much easier if I deleted these three Why does it know? Okay. And then I will draw this as one. And I will tell you why did I do that? Like I will draw this as a one member, something like that. So, okay, right now I draw the beam. And the second thing is I want to put the uh, end conditions. So I have hinge here, two rollers here. So let's do it. I will select this joint and I will go to assign joint restraint and I want to assign a hinge and I click on the hinge and I will say okay I will draw a hinge and here there is a ro roller and another one here so I will assign joint restraint and then I will hit roller I'll say okay so I have the two rollers uh, defined here Okay, so right now the geometry is ready to have loads. So let's put loads. I'll click on this member, and I know that this member has a live load of one ton per meter. So I'm gonna click on this member, assign, and I will go to frame loads. If you want to assign geometry related information, you will find them in this top panel, but here is the load information. So this is a frame load, not a joint load. And it's a distributed load. So I will click on distributed load. So here, it will ask you a few questions. Is it a dead or live? So, okay, I'm going to pick live because this is a live load. And it's the coordinate system is global. And it asks you for the direction of load. So you have many choices here. You can say that the load direction is in the gravity. Gravity means negative Z. And if you and if you click on if you if you choose to uh, to go with gravity, you will have to put the loads in positive, like one positive uh, ton per meter. But if you choose to make it z, so you will have to put the load in the negative direction, negative one, because the gravity is equal to negative z. Okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep it gravity, and I'm gonna add uniform load equal to one. Okay. So right now we have lots of information that we need to enter here. So it asks you, this beam has a uniform load or not? Yeah, it has a uniform load and I put it one. And it asks you about the transitory load. Does it have any load on top of this uniform load that is not uniform, like linearly or something? No, it doesn't. So I will keep the load of the transitory loads, all of them are equal to zero. So I'm gonna change all this to make it zero. So I make sure that this is zero, zero, everything related to trapezoidal load is zero. And I will hit apply. Let's see what happened here. So it put a uniform load, live load on this beam equal to one. Let's get to this beam, the second one. The second one is, is a special because it, it doesn't have any uniform load. It has a trapezoidal load. So let's see how we can do the trapezoidal load but doesn't have uniform. Sometimes you can have uniform uh, on top of like a trapezoidal load on top of a uniform load. You can have one and then the trapezoidal load. This is not our case. It's only trapezoidal load. All right, so I have here five ton per meter. So I will click on this frame and I will keep it gravity as well. And I will make the uniform load zero because I don't have any, any, any uniform load. And it asks you about information about the trapezoidal load. But before I put the information about the trapezoidal load, it gives you two options. Do you want me to give the information as relative distance from the end? Like you tell me what is the value of the load at 0.25 of the distance or 0.5 of the distance or 100% of the distance? Or do you want to give me the load as an absolute distance? Absolute distance works for me because I know these distances. Okay, so let's get back to the geometry from the AutoCAD file. All right. 
So going here, I will find that from zero, at distance zero, the load, what is the value of the trapezoidal load? Zero. And at distance 2.5, and distance 3.5, and distance six, zero. Okay, so come back here. I will make sure that I have absolute. And then I have zero, 2.5, 3.5, and six. And I will put here five, and here another five, and I'll hit okay. Oh, okay. So right now we did it as a dead load. So let's go back to assign because here it's in the AutoCAD file. It's a dead load and this one is a live load. So assign, frame load, distributed. Okay, so let's see. First, the first thing I want to delete the, the dead load. So I make sure that I'm in live. Sorry, I need to delete the live load because what I put here was a live load. And I'm going to say delete existing loads and then apply. Okay. So this is the first thing. Then I click back here and I will make sure that this is dead load and I will put re replace existing. And I will put back all these numbers and I will hit apply. And I'll say, okay. So right now I have, this is defined as a dead load. And as I told you, the software only can show one load pattern at a time. So it only shows here dead load, like frame distribution dead. So it only shows it. It doesn't show the light. If you want to switch, you can switch the screen. Okay, let's get back to the other load on the cantilever. So I, this cantilever has a dead load, three ton per meter. It's a trapezoidal, but it's a special trapezoid. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on this one. And then I will hit assign frame load distributed. And um, I make sure it's dead. Uniform load is zero. And at zero distance, the value of the load is equal to three. So I'll get back here and I put three. And then I can remove all these. Um, maybe. Okay, so maybe we can put one two or 1.5 and two mm. okay so i think relative distance here will work much better I can add the start and the end, but if I add a relative value that is not like I put it zero to oh yeah, you we can add two, two, two. This is oh yeah, it's that's that's a good option. Three. It's rather than calculate three zero. Zero and zero. It's rather than you calculate at the distance like 1.5 or something and, and calculate the load, you just repeat them. And then you'll have three and zero, apply. Okay, yeah, so you'll have a load something like this. So if we zoom in, it will be something like this. All right, so Right now I put all the loads on this beam, dead, live, and everything. So if you want to define some load combinations, so, yeah. You... oh yeah, the concentrated loads. Okay, so for these concentrated loads, we already prepared the, um, the geometry here. We have two points here. So what you are gonna do, we are you are gonna draw a point, something like this, like a joint here and a joint here. And then you can choose these two joints and assign joint load forces. And then I will go back to the, it's eight ton and it's dead load. So I make sure it, the load is dead. 
and I have all the loads, other loads are zero, and I have negative eight, and then I will assign okay. So I will have the eight ton is both here. Okay, so uh, one thing about the visualization in SAP 2000, it only shows also one load pattern. So here, it, it, the visualization is just for joint loads. So if you want to visualize any other loads that you assigned before, you will go to display, and then, for example, show elements loads and frame. Uh, you can show it from element. Like you can do it this way and then sh apply. Okay. And then you will find it from here. So an object load can work as well. So element, because I have elements, if you want to show joints, same thing, display, join, and then you can find the load on the, on the joint. Then the next thing is that we can run the analysis. Do you guys remember the load combinations that I wrote from last time? So we can go to combination, add new one, and we can make only one combination. So you can have dead load multiplied by 1.2, right? And the live load multiplied by 1.6, right? Okay, so we put six, 1.6, add, okay. Uh, for load combinations, you can add them before running the analysis or after running the analysis. It doesn't matter. So you can run the analysis and, and define them. But adding loads, it should be before run the analysis. Because if you add, you cannot add any load one, once you uh, run the analysis. Okay, so let's save the work that we have here. And let's name it beam2. Then say save. And let's run the analysis. Okay, so let's run the dead load and live load only. Say okay. Run now. All right, so let's show, there is no axial force. Actually, what's showing here, it's showing the axial force diagram, like the normal force diagram, because we don't have any axial loads. Most of the loads are vertical, so we only have shear and moments. So if you want to display, for example, the shear force diagram, so let's go to show forces, and we will show the forces, for example, from the live load, and let's hit apply. Oh, sorry, uh, this is the reactions, not the shear. So the reactions are here just from the live load. And if you want to show the reactions from the dead load, you will hit apply. And this is from the dead load. If you want to show the reactions from the load combinations that we define, you can see it something like this. Uh, this is for the joint reactions. If we want to show uh, the show deformed shape, yeah, forces and stresses, display forces and stresses. I showed joints. The second thing that I want to show is the frames, uh, internal forces. From dead load, you can show, okay, so what kind of internal forces on this beam? Is it, is there any moment about X to do? We talked about this last time. Like if I have, this is the cross section of the beam, okay? So this is X, number two and this is x num so sorry this is x number three and this x number two the x number one is coming out of the cross section so there is a moment about m33 moment about x number three and there's shear in the direction of x number two okay like this way we don't have any shear in this direction because we don't have any loads out of the plane all the loads is coming this way so all the shear in two direction and the moment about x number three so if, for example, if you try to show shear 3, 3, and you hit apply, everything will be zero. There's nothing. But if you hit access 2, 2, and hit apply, you will find some shear. Okay? Same thing with the moment. If you try to show moment 2, 2, it's going to be zero because we don't have any loads out outside of the plane. Okay? But if you try to show moment 3, 3, will be something like this. 
this is for dead load. If we want to show the live load, it will be the same thing, apply. And is this moment make sense for the live load? Yes, it makes sense because we only have distributed load here. And you can see distributed load constant makes a parabolic curve from the second degree. So we have a parabola just in the first span, right? Other than that, it's linear. Okay, so the moment goes all the back here and then goes linear from this way. And it's a zero here because you come here and cut a section, there is no any other loads that can make moments. So all the moments on the last day is uh, zero. And if, for example, let's um, do the, um, the dead load. So the dead load here, you guys know what is the degree of this problem? Just think a little bit. Okay, if we have constant load, what is the degree of the problem? Second degree, okay? Because you, the shear is gonna be first and the moment is gonna be second degree. But here I have a linear, right? I have line like a half triangle. Uh, or, or trapezoid. So it's a linear parabola from the first degree load. It makes the shear second degree and makes the moment third degree. So let's let's check the shear. Can you see the shear? It's not line. Line. It's not line like this. It's a second degree parabola. So everything makes sense in this case. And this one as well. Like, can you see the shear? Is also a parabolic curve because I have a triangle on this view. All right, so we are done with the beam. Does anyone have any question? Okay, so let's do another example. Um, man, let me tell you one thing. If you want to get more information about any beam uh any beam on this example you can right click on this beam and actually you can de get detailed information about the shear at any cross section within the beam like here you can get the moment m3 or the shear two same thing with any other beam like even this one right click and you will get all the information that you want Okay, so the second problem that we need to solve today is a frame. So we need to solve this frame. So I'm going to, I want to make sure that you understand the inclined loads. So I'm going to put an example here. This L and this distance is L dash. Up here. This is W. I'm going to write this. You guys know the difference between these. This is just like when you solve a problem, you can get one of these. What is the difference between each one of this one? 
So this one is a load distributed on, on the length of the beam. So if you want to get the resultant of this load, it's gonna be in which direction? The direction of the load is the direction of these lines, okay? So this one is going down, right? So we are given the direction. This one also is going down. How about this one? This is this perpendicular to the uh, B. What is the resultant of this load? What? The resultant. It's the W time per minute. No, it's a WL. It's distributed by the lens L. So the resultant is equal to WL. This one, the resultant is WL dash. What this means, if I put the load W without writing horizontal projection, that means this load is distributed over the length of the beam. And the total length of this beam is L. But if I put the load W and I write it's a horizontal projection, that means I calculated this load based on this horizontal projection. So the resultant W should be multiplied by the horizontal projection of the beam. WL dash. This one, I wrote W and it's distributed by the lens L. So it's going to be RL. So this one is like this one, but the difference is the direction. Okay. This one is special because I calculated the load based on the horizontal projection. So what we do actually, we calculate the load over the lens of the beam, WL, and then distribute it over L dash and divide it over L dash. Okay, so which one is going to be bigger, this one or this one? No, this one. This one, like, okay, let's let's make an example. If we are saying this distance L dash is four, and the length of the beam is five, and the load is equal to two, so what is the value of the resultant? It's ten. Two by five is equal to ten. Here, same 10, it's the same amount of like the resultant is 10. We are going to divide it over four. Like if you put 10 over four, it's going to be 2.5. So if you want to put this load as a horizontal projection, it's going to be 2.5, same load. Okay. So I can give you the problem in two different ways. I can give it this way or I can give it this way. And sometimes we write this like this. We put the beam alone like this. And we put the load something like this. So that means it's a horizontal projection load. And I give you that W is equal to 2.5 ton per meter. It is the same thing. If you want to get the resultant, it's going to be something like this. And you get the horizontal projection at this four. So the resultant is equal to 2.5 multiplied by four. It's going to be 10 ton. So if you can get it this way or you can get it this way. In this example, I give it both. I put the load as a horizontal projection. So it's not distributed on the inclined length of the beam. It's distributed on the horizontal projection of the beam, which is a two meter. And I told you here, it's a horizontal projection. Okay? So just be careful. Brother, you turn off the light. Thanks. Okay, so let's uh, start uh, doing this problem here. I'm going to do file, new model, and I'm going to save my previous example. And I'm gonna make sure that my units are ton meter. And as we know, we are gonna do grids only. So let's see, what is the minimum number of grids that I can do in X axis that allows me to draw this problem easily? How many grids in X axis should I draw? Three, three right? One, two, and three. How many grids in Y axis? It's one because this is a 2D problem. It's X is D problem, okay? There's no something in the Y direction other than D. How about Z direction? Okay, so let's see. I have one, two, three, four, and five, right? Because these are three different levels. Okay, so let's, let's get back here. I'm gonna say I have three in X direction, one in Y direction, and Z direction, I have five. Uh, the X direction uh, spacing, uh, it's different. So I'm going to keep these as they are here. I'm going to fix them. So I'm going to hit OK. And for this one, I'm going to say I want to see X to Z. 
It's something like this. It is not the one that I'm looking for. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna uh, right click and edit the grid system and modify. And let's modify there is the X direction. So I have 18 and another three, so it's gonna be 21. So I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna put the first spacing as 18 and the second spacing as 21. Uh, let's get to Z. We need to read Z. So I have zero, three, and this point six, and this point is eight, and then I have six plus three is nine. Okay, zero, three, six, eight, nine. Okay, zero, three, six, eight, and nine. So I'll hit okay, okay. So right now, I have it like this. All right, so in this problem, I'm gonna I'm not gonna define the material, but if you want, you can go ahead and define them. I'm gonna use the steel and concrete materials that are already predefined by the software. What I'm gonna redefine is the frame sections because in this problem, it gave me different frame sections. The columns, here I have column one, 25 by 100 centimeter, and I have beam 25 by 150, and I have a tie 20, five also by 150 looks like they are the same maybe we can change one of them like we can we try to change this to make it 100 so that we can have different sections so i'm gonna define three sections let's get back to sap 2000 add a new property and i'm gonna make all of them concrete rectangle and i'm gonna define this section as a c1 it's um uh, C125 by 100, 25 by 100. And I'll make sure that this is one and this is 25.25. And I make sure that the material is concrete. I'm gonna add this cross section. <clears throat> I'm gonna add a copy from this cross section and uh, I'm gonna name it beam 25 by 150. I make sure this one is 1 1.5 and this is 25. Okay, the next one is 25 by 100, it's a tie. Add new property and I'm gonna add concrete, tie 25 by 100. One, 25. All right, I have all the cross section, the beam, the column, the tie. So basically this is a frame and there is a tie in the middle. And look at this one, what is this? It's an intermediate hinge. So this tie only has a normal force. So I need to release the moment at the start and the end. All right, so I will get back here and let's draw the sections. Uh, when I click on this one, draw frame, I need to make sure that I'm drawing column before I start. And the column is stops at eight. So it's from here to here. And then I will click outside to draw another column from here to here. Right now I'm done with the columns. So while I'm still in the drawing, I'm gonna change this from column to beam. So it's beam 25 by 50. And uh, this beam is something like this. And I'm gonna click from here to here, I'm gonna cl right click so that I can end drawing beams. Make sure that I draw the beams the right way. And then the last one is the tie. So I need to change the cross section to be tie. And it's a from here to here. All right, so what should I do to make this a tie, not a frame? You guys remember, we did it in trust last time. I need to release the moment at the start and the end so that the software doesn't understand that this is a frame section. This is a tie member that only take axial force. It doesn't have a moment at the start and the end. So I click on this member and I go to assign frame and you will find something is called um, release and partial fixity. So I'm gonna click on release and I'm gonna release the moment three, three 
at the start and the end, because this is what the intermediate hinge do. It has moment zero at the start and the end. And I'll hit OK. All right, so the next thing is that I want to add the boundary conditions. So let's get back here. I have hinge and another hinge. So I have two hinges. So I'm going to choose these two joints. I will go to assign, joint, restraint, and then hinge, and then OK. All right, so I'm going to assign loads, but I didn't define the load pattern yet. So I'm going to go to define load patterns, and I make sure that I don't have self-weight, modify, and I'm going to add another one, live load. And then that, and then I change this to live, add, and then OK. All right, so let's put <clears throat> the dead load first. So I have dead load, one ton per meter, horizontal projection on this beam. And this load is not horizontal projection. The dead load is four ton meter. OK, let's be careful when we do this. I mark it this member, and I'm going to say assign frame loads, it's distributed load, and it's a dead, and in the global direction. And yeah, look here. So here, you have gravity and gravity projected. Which one should I choose? Or you can have Z projected, or Z. Which one should I choose? You can choose, definitely it's a projected, right? Because it's a horizontal projected load. Right? So I'm not going to choose Z or gravity. I'm going to choose either Z projected or gravity projected because here it shows the load is horizontal projection of the load. Okay? So it should be distributed on the horizontal projection of the uh, beam, not the entire length of the beam. Like this load is not distributed. Like, for example, this is 18, and if we calculate the length of this, uh, a key, uh, frame is going to be, for example, 20. So this is going to be 1 multiplied by 18, not 1 multiplied by 20. So I need to make sure that I'm, I'm choosing projected lens, Z projected or gravity projected. What is the difference between Z projected and gravity projected? The direction. So I, I either put negative in Z projected or I choose gravity projected and I put uniform 1 ton meter, and I'll hit apply. Let's see what happened here. We, hmm, interesting. Let's see, assign frame load distributed. Yep, oh yeah, here. So uh, actually, it sounds like when even when we try to create new problem, it takes the numbers from the previous problem. So it doesn't zero everything. So even I did new model. So make sure that you put zeros in the trapezoidal load. And I make sure that I have replace existing load. And I'll set apply. OK, so it's going to be something like this. All right. So what happened here? Even I, even did, even I did a projected load. And it should be one, it put it on the entire length of the beam. But make sure, look at this, it's not one, it's 0.99. So SAS 2000 doesn't show projected load. Every load should be on the entire length of the beam. So what, what SAS 2000 did, it take the one that is on the horizontal projection, calculate the resultant, which is one multiplied by 18, and divided by the length of the beam, and then he put the equivalent non-projected load, which is 0.99. Okay, so it's the same thing. And if we want to do the same thing with the live load, because I have another live load, it's also one. So it's the same thing, but I make sure that I'm in the live load panel. So assign distributed loads. I'm going to change that to live. And it's a gravity projected one, one. Should I put replace existing or uh, add to existing or delete existing? Add or it doesn't matter because it's a completely different load case. Only add and replace, like if you want to add to existing load or replace existing load, have it in the same case. Since I'm in live, live has zero. So when you replace the zero with something, it's the same thing. And when you add to zero, 
it is the same thing. So I'm going to say replace and then I will hit OK. All right, so I have another and this is one is a live load. So let's see this one. This one is not horizontal projected. It's a forwarded load, three live load. So I will assign frame load, distributed load, and um, start with dead. And it's not gravity projected. It's a gravity. And the dead is four ton meter. So I'm going to put four. I'm going to hit apply. And click on this member one more time. Choosing live and putting three. And then I will say OK. All right. So right now it shows all the live load on the beam. And I have one horizontal projection for 0.99. And this one is three ton per meter live load. All right. So I think we are done with the problem. Well, all what we're going to do right now is just run the problem. And I'm not going to run this case. And I run the other cases. I'll hit OK. Oh, uh, I didn't hit OK. Oh, I hit, uh, sorry, I should hit right now, run now. And let's uh, save frame one. All right. So here it shows the shear force on this beam. If you want to show the bending moment, analyze, uh, sorry, uh, display forces, frames, and the moment three, three, fly. Okay. As you can see, I don't have any shear or any moment on the tie, but when I hit display, and show axial force, I'll definitely find some axial force here. Okay. All right. Uh, let's get back to the bending moment display. All right. So we are showing the dead load apply. Uh, I'm going to show moment three, three. Okay. So what happened here? So I'm showing the bending moment, and it happens to be like the bending moment should be parabolic curve, right? Because it's a distributed load. We have dead load. I have four ton per meter. I have one ton per meter here, and it's not distributed load. So it looks like I'm just changing load. This happens because mostly SAC 2000, when it calculates the uh, internal forces, it calculates at the start point, at this joint, and this joint, and this joint, and one in the middle. But if you want to show the parabolic curve, you need to divide, divide this into some segments. Maybe you divide it into 10 pieces, 12 pieces, and it will show the bending moment on each joint. Same thing with here. Make it here, here, and here. So, so let's divide this frame and see what will happen. Like if I unlock the model and I selected this frame and I did edit and I said edit line, divide frame and I'm gonna divide this frame into divide at intersections into numbers let's say I'm gonna divide this frame into 10 pieces and I'll hit okay and let's run and see how the result is gonna change run now see the parabolic curve start to show. Why? Because this is what's at 2000. It calculates at the joints. Once you increase the number of joints, it do calculation at each joint and make the parabolic curve smooth. This one is not as smooth yet because it's only two joints. <laughs> Once you increase the number of joints, it will make this shape. Can you see there's a little sharp edges? Once you increase them, the sharp edges will be gone. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any questions so far? All right. So the next application that we are going to discuss in the next 15 minutes is the uh, the analysis of slabs. So let's do this example. This example is a, is a simple floor plan that is 15 by 15 meter, has beams uh, 25 by 70 as a perimeter beam and shear walls on the at the edges, like a half shear wall here and shear wall here. Actually, um, 
How about we not care about the shear wall right now? We can do it next time. Uh, let's assume that there is a beam here, continue, and there's a column at the edges. And let's draw this plan. It's X, Y, or X, Z, or what, what, what level that we are working on. Since it's a plan, like a floor plan, so it's an X, Y plan, okay? It's not X, Z. All right, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to go file, new model, and let it save. And it's ton meter. I'm going to go do grids. So the grids here is very simple. How many grids in X direction? And in Y direction? Z? One. One, because there is no zero. It's There is always a one to start with, okay? What is the spacing in X? It's five. It's always five. Okay, so I'm going to do four, four, and Z is one. And I'm going to do five. 5 and Y and Z doesn't matter. It's something like this, okay? So let's go to define material. We'll keep it the concrete and same material here. So let's define cross sections, um, add new property. And I'm gonna make concrete beam, beam 25 by 70 centimeter. 0.7, it's only one beam. All right, for the columns, right now it's a floor plan. So it's not a 3D model yet. So what I'm gonna do, the columns represent here as a support system for this plan. So I'm gonna put a hinge at each one of these columns. So because this is what supports the plan. Once we make this as a building 3D, you are gonna make these columns as a 3D frame member. But right now it's just a 2D. So uh, the columns, I'm not gonna define them. It will be hinged. Okay, so I define the frame. So let's define the slab. I will assume that the, I have a flat slab and this, the slab thickness is uh, 22 centimeter. Okay, so th this is a new thing to do today is to define what we used to define before is um, frame sections. What we are going to do right now is define area section because it's a slab. And here, do you guys remember when we talked about the shell plane? And actually, they don't have the uh, the plate and the um, and the membranes. They change it. They have solid and plane. Okay. What we are going to use as we discussed, shell is the general member that we can use it for shear walls and slab. So right now, I can see that SAP 2000. Remove, remove the, the plate and membrane. So we are gonna stick with shell for any modeling for walls or slabs. So I'm gonna bake shell and I'm gonna add new section. Do you guys remember the shell or not? We did it like two lectures ago. We said the shell section, how many degrees of freedom at each joint of the shell member? Six, right? Three translations, three rotation. And the total number is four by six. That's 24 degrees of freedom. And uh, it's a very simple to define the slab. So I'm going to name this a slab. It's a slab 22 centimeter. And it asks you here. Yeah, here actually where they ask you, it's a plane of membrane. So they put it here right now. So, so you have here, it tells it asks you, is it a shell thin or thin? Or a blade thin or thick or a membrane? Okay, so we, we agree that we are not going to go in the debate between plate and membrane, right? But you can you can choose either shell or or plate because this is a slab. The slab is a plate. Okay. The shear wall can be shell or a membrane. Okay. So the difference right now is it between thin or thick. Slabs is usually a thin shell because the thickness is very very small. But if you are modeling, for example, a foundation and the foundation it's a raft foundation, the thickness of the raft is like one meter or two meter. This is a shell thick. So we are gonna. Thick, but right now, most of the slabs is shell thin because if you choose shell thick, it includes the shear deformation that happens in this shell. If the shell is very, very small, the shear deformation can be neglected. But if you have a very deep thickness, there is a shear that can have that can happen in this big cross section. So I'm gonna make shell thin, and uh, it asks you for this. Uh, 
Shelton, it asks you some information. What is the thickness of the slab? And it asks you about two thickness, thickness in membrane and thickness in bending. So the membrane, it asks you what is the effective thickness of the slab that can work if this is, um, if this slab got tension or compression. Okay, so membrane action is tension compression action. So I will assume that all the slab is working in tension. However, the slab doesn't have tension. Mostly it's bending. If you put it zero, that's fine. Okay. All right. So let's put bending. This is the most important thing because this is what the slab do. It takes bending moment because right now all our loads is vertical and it makes bending moment to this slab. So I'm going to put 0.22. All right. And I make sure that the material is concrete because if, if you swap this with a, a steel material, what will happen? Can you assume that you have a floor of metal that has a thickness 22 centimeter? So the deflection will be zero. It's not gonna have a deflection, but this is concrete material, okay? So it's it's less a step than the steel. All right, so uh, it's a 4,000 and uh, I think that's everything that we need to define here right now. So I define the slab. So I have here slab 22 centimeter and, I will, and then I will hit okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do right now I'm gonna draw the beams. So let's look back at the AutoCAD file. I have beam all around the perimeter. I'm gonna assume that there is no shear walls here. I'm gonna do it next time. And <clears throat> I'll go to draw beam and then it's beam 25 by 70. I have beam here, 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 and here, all around the perimeter. And then the next thing is the slab. So I will go here with draw rectangular area. So this is how you draw slabs. This, how you draw frame. So I'm going to draw this one. You can do actually this one as well. Like if you want to do, you can uh, draw um, a quick area. Basically all what you have to do, you click inside here and it's going to make a slab in this block. A slab in this block and stuff. So you'll have to click eight, nine times. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw this one and draw one big and divide them over the grids. So I believe this is will be mat, much faster. So I'm going to click here and I make sure that it's a slab 22 centimeter and I will draw big one. It is drawn. It's the color. The color is red. If you want to see it here, if you want to change the display options, you can click on this one and actually you can change the display options of the area. And um, joints, frames, areas, sections. So you can put sections like you, if you hit apply, it will tell you what is the cross section or you can remove it. Um, I think, oh yeah, general options. Yeah, so there's object options and general options. And once you put general options, you can change colors. Um white color material so you can put sections material i think there's a one that chose fill the area labels restraints Which one? Oh yeah, there's offset. I think this one. Oh, uh, can you see? Fill? Okay, yeah, it's fill objects, this one. And if you want to see the extruded view, you can see it something like this. If you want to see the real cross section. So I'm used like to SAB 18 or SAB 14. It was completely different than this one. All these options were in one uh, window. So right now they have object and general, but anyway, uh, it's it's better to put it in a standard view because the extruded view make it a little bit heavier. So I'm gonna put it like um, in a standard view like this and I will hit okay. And right now I'm gonna divide this area over the grid. So I'll edit, I will edit this area and edit divide area and it asks you how you want to divide it. So I'm gonna pick the third one and I'm going to say intersection with visible straight grid lines. And I'll hit apply. Okay. So divide it into nine pieces. 
So right now I can put the columns. So I can put columns at each one of these joints. So I selected the entire model, slabs, frames, and joints. And I want to assign hinges. So what happened if I did this? Nothing, because when I assign, I hit assign joints. So it basically filter my selection and remove the areas and frames and just isolate the, the joints and assign hinges at the joints only. So I'm gonna hit join restraint and columns usually when we do 2D analysis, we put the columns as hinges. It doesn't allow X or Y translation. So I'm gonna put hinges and I'm gonna say, okay. So right now I have hinges all over here. So if you want to rotate and see the hinges, I believe, So the hinges is, can you see this? Like this green stuff? These are the hinges. Because it's 2D, so we can not see blue. And so right now I have the geometry, okay? So let's put the loads. Let's assume that this, let's define... Um, Okay, right now we are not gonna calculate dead load on our own. We let the software calculate the own weight using the self weight property, and he will calculate the own weight of this. But let's put a live load, okay? So let's define here, define load pattern. And in load pattern, I'm gonna keep the self weight one. So if I kept it one, so right now I'm asking the software to calculate the self weight for me. The second thing is I'm gonna do the live load on my own live and and the live load is going to be a zero self weight and i'm going to add a new load pattern so if you want to add live load in this so let's add for example let's make it a residential building and let's put live load of 200 kilograms or 150 kilograms okay so i'm gonna select all these areas And I'm gonna assign, and right now I'm gonna assign area load, not a frame load. So I will search for area loads here, and I'm gonna put a uniform load on the shell. So here we'll ask you what the type of the load. So I'm gonna say it's a live load and it's uniform. And the load is it's 200 kilograms, which is like 0.2 ton per meter square, because this is an area load. So it's all over the meter square area of the slab. And I'm gonna say, okay. So right now it's above the load. So right now the load is zero, zero, and negative two. That means there is no load in X, there's no load in Y, all the load in Z, and it's a negative two because it's in the gravity direction. If you want to change it, for example, you can click one more time, assign uniform, and you make sure it's a gravity. And for example, let's make it 150 kilograms. And I'm going to say, okay. So you will see it's negative 0.15. All right, so right now I'm done with my slab model. So let's see, what if I run the model like this? How's the result is gonna be? Okay, let's see how's the results. With like, it's not right, there's something is messing, but let's see if we run it this way, how's the results gonna be? Let's uh, not run this case model and run the dead and live load and run now. Let's name it slab one. All right, so the model is run right now and let's let's see, for example, display and let's see the format shape due to the dead load and I'll hit okay. All right, let's see what happened here. There's a deformed shape but looks like the the only elements that are moving or are deforming is the beams. The slab is not deforming. Why? Because it's the same thing that I discussed before. Uh, the the software is 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 a finite element base. The finite element calculate deflections, reactions, internal forces at the joints. And once we throw the slab as, as a four point 
It calculates the reactions and the deformation of this joint, this joint, and this joint. Okay. And take average in between. I have a hinge here, hinge here, hinge here, and hinge there. So all the displacement at these hinges are zero. So it's zero at the corners, and the average is zero. So the displacement for the entire slab is zero, right? So to make this software solve better, we need to define this, divide this slab into smaller pieces so that we allow the software to calculate displacement at many joints. The more pieces that you have, the more accurate results that you are going to have. So for example, you can divide them into four pieces. If you divide them into four, you are going to add one point in the middle and it's going to calculate at this one point. But it's it's much better. We usually, when we do analysis for structures, we make the mesh size of the slab 0 0.5 by 0.5. This is a very good resolution to work with. So we need to make this five by five meter slab into 0.5 by 0.5 pieces. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna unlock my model to do this a change. And I'm gonna select all the area sections and I'm gonna hit edit. Edit area, divide area, and then in divide area, it will ask you divide the area into object of the maximum size. So I'm gonna ask the software to make the maximum size is point point five meters. So I'm gonna make it point five in x direction, which is the two direction. Like it ask you, uh, in which one? Like, like here, age point from one to two or one to three. So in x direction is point five. And why direction 0.5? And I'm gonna say okay. So look what happened. It's divided, it's divided into smaller pieces, but make sure when you make this division that, for example, if you have a column here, that the mesh size is connected to the column, the joint is connected to the column. If the joint is not connected to the column, the slab is not gonna feel that there's a column here because this is how the software is working. It's working at the joints. Like if the joints feels uh, like, for example, there's a column, so the joint should connect to the column. And maybe I will show you an example. If if this mesh it doesn't uh, has a joint with this column, how what what what's gonna happen here? Like the column it doesn't it will it will act like the column doesn't exist. So let's see if we run the model how the model will be look like. So I'm gonna run the model. Run now. So right now the deformed shape looks much reasonable, right? The slab is deforming with the loads, the beam. The beam is deforming with the slab as well. Both of them are connected, okay? So, and this is only due to the dead load, the own weight of the structure. If you want to go and check, for example, the, uh, the displacement, example well let's make it easy and show it as a contour like we can display uh, deform a shape and then um, we can make it draw contours on the object in the z direction because i want to see the deformation in z and i'm gonna say okay so this visualization is much better it gives you the displacement as a contour with colors, like the color, the beam color, that means that the displacement is negative 1.3 multiplied by 10 to the power negative three, which means that it's one millimeter. So we have one millimeter displacement at the middle. Okay. So if you want to show it due to the live load, so you can go to display forces, uh, sorry, uh, deformation, and then you change this from dead to live and see what will happen, apply. So the maximum that we have here is, is less than even one millimeter because it's 10 to the power negative six. So it's like 0.3 millimeter. But if we make a load combination, like if I define load combination, and I add a new one, and let's add the dead 1.2 and the live 1.6. I'll say add, okay. And let's show the deformed shape display. 
the deformed shape due to the load combination, compo number one, and I'll say okay. So right now, if you check the deflection here, it's much bigger, it's around two millimeter because we added the dead and live and factored by 1.2, 1.6, so it's much more. Okay, so let's see other results. So you can display um, forces on the frames, like the beams that we have here, due to the load combination, and we can see moment M33, and we'll see, okay. So you can see the moment something like this. So here you have a bending moment here is zero, and then parabolic curve, and then negative moment, positive, and this makes sense. All right, so this is for the uh, bending moment. So the next thing that I wanna show you uh, is the shear force diagram. So let's see the, um, the Q22 lie. Okay, and this is how the shear force look like. It's linear. And um, let's see something new. Let's see the bending moment on this lab. Did you guys um, study, have any courses in the analysis, the design of, of uh, reinforced concrete slab, solid slab, flat slab? You didn't? Okay. So basically, it is, can you turn on the lights? All right. So if we do analysis for the slab, but you, you, did you guys get any, um, you know, the bending moments on the beams. So what we do in the slab, like mostly we get like a strip in the slab that is one meter length. And if you take this strip out, it's something like this. Okay. And this lens is one meter. And for example, I mean like this width. And this is the slab thickness, which what we have here is 0.22. And we calculate the reinforcement per unit meter. Like we calculate the reinforcement, like it means this reinforcement per unit meter. So let's see how is the bending moment look like on this slab if we take a strip in, in a specific location. So if I come back here and I said display uh, forces on the shell, and here, I'm going to show what is called M22 and M12. Actually, the slab has lots of internal forces. Like you can show M11, M22, M12, uh, many things, F11. So what we are interested in, like if you if you imagine that the slab is something like this, mostly we design slabs on bending moments. So we want to know what is the bending moment in this direction so that I can put reinforcement in this direction. And what is the bending moment in this direction so that I can put reinforcement in this direction. So this is what is unique about slab and uh, from beams. Like beams, it's only bending in one direction. So we put the reinforcement in the direction of the beam. But slabs has two way moments, has a moment this way and a moment this way. So we put reinforcement of longitudinals and, and uh, on the other side, okay? So let's see first the moments in the X direction, which is called M11 here, due to the load combination that we have. And I will say, okay, and then we will find a bending moment like this. All right, so next time so it's 10, uh, it's 10 45, I'm gonna continue showing the bending moment and moving forward, I'm gonna like uh, some edits, like putting some short shear walls, uh, playing with this model so that we understand how it's performing 2D and 3D, okay? All right, see you guys next time.